Onward, which is the latest uh, Pixar digital animation. Film opens in a sort of fantastical world which is oddly reminiscent of Shrek, okay? But what's happened is that magic has been superseded by rationality, by electricity, by gas. So people no longer use magic, they use ordinary power sources. But we are still in a magical world in which there are magical creatures, but they're just not using magic. Uh, two brothers, Chalk and Cheese brothers, uh, through a complicated setup, end up botching a spell to bring back their lost father for a day. But they botch the spell, so they only bring back half of him. They bring him back from the waist down. And they then, the brothers are voiced by Tom Holland and Chris Pratt, they then have to embark on a quest that will reunite them and indeed him. And en route, they have to learn to deal with the new magical power that one of them apparently has. He has. Here we go. Focus. Uh, something wrong? Sorry, it's just your stance is, uh, here, chin up, elbows out, feet apart, back, slightly arched. Okay, how's that feel? Great. Oh, one more thing. Barley. Okay, okay. Magnora, get you on. Don't let the magic spook you. Okay. Elbows. What? Elbows up. No, 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 it's too high. That's too high. I'm trying to focus here. Oh, yeah, 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 focus, focus on the can. Focus. Focus. Barley! Stop it, get it! It worked! The can is huge! And the band is huge! And you're... Oh, no. See, the problem with that is it is a largely visual clip, which is that the making the thing being make somebody small, as you could, I, you could just about figure yeah, out what's going on, but I'm sorry, yeah. but that's just the way the thing went. So... Uh, okay, the setup sounds super macabre. It's actually sort of less macabre than it sounds because it's got a kind of you know magical thing to it. But it's definitely true that at the beginning of the film, I was thinking, I'm sorry, this doesn't have any of the simpli the classic simplicity. Okay, think of Toy Story, right? Classic simplicity of Toy Story. When you're out of the room, toys come to life. Okay? Yeah. Or the classic simplicity of Inside Out. It's numbskulls, yeah? All these things are happening inside your head. Or the classic simplicity of Monsters, Inc., we scare because we care. You know, the, the, we, we carry all those things are really, even as you heard from me attempting to set up the plot for that clip, it's kind of complicated. And, and I was thinking, okay, well, it's a weird mix of derivative on the one hand and yet oddly obscure on the other hand. However, about halfway through, the film starts to find its feet, no pun intended. And then it barrels towards one of those finales which remind you why it is that Pixar are you know as successful as they are because from something which is kind of narratively chaotic and sort of all over the place it moves towards an ending which like a magician pulling a rabbit out of a hat somehow pulls all these disparate elements together and then gives you a finale that you go oh wow <laughs> that well done that's really good because you know you know in the end, with any sort of, with any narrative, um, there, with any narrative like this, particularly a fantasy narrative, there are there are sort of key themes that emerge that that are sort of partly metaphorical and partly it's to do with you know the, the you anyway. As we, I don't want to spoil the end of it, but essentially, it's a story of two chalk and cheese brothers, both of whom are dealing with the loss, the loss of a parent, the loss of magic, the loss of something in their life. And inevitably, the course of the journey must be that what they discover is each other. But the way in which, particularly in the second half of the film, after what I thought was a slightly, you know, not quite as well done as it should be first half, pulled it together. So by the, by the end of it, I was like, OK, yeah, well done. You did it. I'm sold.